Hello, this is Dr. Ben Finio here with a very quick tutorial where I will show you how to draw on your phone in Zoom. Now, before we get started, I do have a ton of other tutorials on using Zoom, mostly on a computer. I do have one about using Zoom on a phone in general, but I didn't go into some of the more advanced features like screen sharing, drawing, or breakout rooms, so I'm going to be doing some more detailed videos on those. So, as you can see here, I have started a basic meeting where it is just us and Mr. Googles and say I would like to share my screen with Mr. Googles and draw using the whiteboard feature. To do that on a phone, you need to tap your screen because the controls auto-hide when you haven't touched the screen for a while. Select the share button at the bottom. You see I waited just a few seconds there and it went away, so don't panic if the controls disappear. Tap the screen again, hit the share button down here at the bottom, and you will see a bunch of different options come up. Now, I might cover some of these in a future video, but for now, we are just going to go down to the Share Whiteboard button. And that is going to bring up a whiteboard interface on your phone. So your instinct might be to just touch this and start drawing on it, but you see that when I do that, nothing happens. In order to start drawing, first you need to click the little pen icon down here in the bottom left. And again, that pen and all of the controls will just disappear if you wait too long without touching the screen. So if you're freaked out and wondering why your screen is just entirely white and you don't see zoom at all, again, don't panic. Tap the screen and the controls will come back up. To start drawing, you simply tap that pen icon and then it will allow you to scribble on the screen. I think the default setting for that line is a little thin and hard to see on my phone. So just like you can on a computer, there are some settings down here at the bottom where you can change the color of the line by tapping this little colored circle. So for example, I'm going to change that to blue. And you can also change the thickness of the line by tapping this little squiggle. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to a thicker line. And now that is much easier to see on my phone screen. Now you do have a bunch of other controls here very similar to what you would have on a computer. For example, there is an erase button if you tap that and then drag across something. It's not a little spot erase. It will erase the entire line segment. If you accidentally erase something and you want it back, there's an undo and redo button up here at the top, so you can undo to bring those back. Hit the redo button to go forward again. And you have a couple other controls down here. There's a little laser pointer icon, so if you click on that, that will give you this little laser pointer dot that doesn't draw anything, but people viewing your shared screen will see that and will show what that looks like in a second. There's a trash can icon if you would like to delete the entire drawing so you can clear just what you have drawn. If you are drawing collabor collaboratively with other users, you can clear all of the drawings and you can also only clear others' drawings and keep your own. So I'm going to, for example, just clear my drawing. That clears the whole thing and saves you from using the eraser to go in and erase everything individually. One more interesting option here, and to be honest, I'm not sure if this exists if you are using a computer or if this is only available on phones and tablets. If you hit the little three dot menu down here in the bottom right, there is a smart recognition feature that you can turn on. And if you experiment with it, you'll see that what this does is take kind of curvy or almost straight lines and make them straight as best as I can tell. So if I draw a clearly curved line, it's gonna leave that alone. But if I try to draw a straight line, now look what happens when I let go here. See how it snapped that to perfectly straight? So again, if, if it's intentionally curved or really squiggly, it's going to leave it alone. But if it looks like you were really trying to draw a straight line, but it came out a little squiggly, you kind of did your best, then it will figure that out and automatically snap it to a straight line. So for example, if you're drawing letters, like I'm kind of gonna draw letter A here. See, it worked for two of those, but not the third line there. So it's not perfect. But if you are just kind of hand drawing shapes like this, Maybe that could be useful. Let's try a star. Oh wow, it turned my star into a triangle. So okay, if that feature is not perfect, maybe sometimes it'll do things you don't expect it to do. But if you're trying to draw a bunch of straight lines by hand and they're coming out a little too squiggly, then that could be a good feature to enable. Otherwise, it's off by default, so you can just go ahead and leave that off and you won't have anything to worry about. Now, let's take a look at what the other people in the meeting would see if you're drawing on your phone. So you can see I have my laptop here that is logged into the same meeting. The phone screen is being shared with the laptop. And one thing that you'll note is that I have the phone in portrait orientation and that it's also showing up in portrait orientation for the laptop user. So for people with a regular landscape orientation computer monitor, this isn't a very efficient use of space. They're gonna have black bars on the right and on the left.
Now let's see what happens if I go ahead and rotate my phone to landscape orientation. So I'm going to reach in here. And you see things get a little funky when I do that. It didn't kind of rescale to fit everything on landscape. It's now just cutting off part of my image, whereas previously I had those other shapes at the bottom there. So if I rotate back to portrait, you see I had the square and everything at the bottom here. If I rotate to landscape, it just kind of zooms in and cuts those off. However, if I clear this entire drawing, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear that drawing. Now, if I start drawing here, you see that what I see in landscape orientation will kind of match what appears on the computer. So be careful with that. You wouldn't wanna switch back and forth between portrait and landscape as you're drawing. If you know that most of your viewers are primarily going to be watching on a computer with a landscape screen, then you might want to rotate your phone to landscape before you start drawing. But if you're doing a meeting where most people are on their phones and you think they're all going to be holding in portrait orientation, then you could keep your phone upright. And to show that one more time, just to show that we have the same problem, if we go from landscape back to portrait, so you can see I have four lines drawn in the four corners of the screen here. And if I go ahead and rotate, whoops, there we go. If I go ahead and rotate that to portrait, you see it's kind of cut it off and now I only have these two lines and I don't think there's any way to really scroll around and see the rest of that. So I can back out of the drawing mode. Again, so there was, when I'm in the pen mode here, this lets me draw, I have a little X up here to stop drawing, but you can't swipe to scroll. So as far as I can tell, those sides of that image just kind of get cut off and lost when you rotate between portrait and landscape. And finally, this is similar to the option on a computer. If you don't want to have to delete this every time you want to start a new drawing, you can create multiple whiteboards by going down to the little three dot menu here in the lower right, select new whiteboard. That'll give you a clean slate to draw something new, but then you can toggle back and forth between them. So if you go to view all whiteboards, you see I've created a couple here, I can swap between them. And if you want to save any of them individually, you click the little three dot icon again, and there's a save to album button so you can save that image file so people can access, say, your written notes or drawings after the meeting. When you are ready to stop sharing, first you hit this little X up here in the top left. That is going to take you out of the drawing mode, but you are still sharing your screen with everyone. To actually stop sharing the drawing completely, you need to click the stop share button down here at the bottom. Make sure you don't get confused and hit this leave button in the top right. That is to leave the meeting. It's not to leave the screen sharing. So again, if you want to stay in the meeting and stop sharing your screen, make sure you hit stop share at the bottom, not leave in the top right. So I'm going to hit stop share. That is going to bring me back to the regular meeting. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion for another tutorial, please feel free to leave a comment below this video. You can also find a link there to my playlist of all my other Zoom tutorials. Thank you.